This presentation is about the economic cycle and why the national income of an economy tends to move up and down in a cyclical fashion over time. In order to understand this, we first have to define the term potential output, potential output. The potential output of an economy is defined as the output that an economy produces when all the resources are used at their normal rate of working. So if we imagine that an economy has a certain amount of land, labor, capital, and enterprise, when these resources are being used at their normal rate, the output that is being produced is the potential output of that economy at that time. So by normal, let's see what we mean by normal. A worker normally works eight hours a day in a developed economy. And so when all the workers are working eight hours a day, that would be the potential output of the labor. And if we apply this concept of normal working to land and capital and enterprise as well as labor, we can see that that will be the combined potential output of the economy. So we can talk about potential output as the output when all resources are being used at their normal rate. Now we can go on to talk about uh, what happens to the potential output over time. In fact, the potential output of any economy increases over time because the number of workers may be increasing. There may be a higher birth rate or there may be immigration and the efficiency of the workers increases as they become more educated and trained. The capital stock of the economy also increases as uh, we build up our stock of machines and uh, also we may discover new natural resources. So over time, we believe that the potential output of an economy actually goes up. And this is shown in this graph here, where we see on the y-axis potential output and on the x-axis time. So we can see that over time, the potential output of the economy increases as education gets better, uh, more workers come into the country from outside, perhaps, through immigration, and technology improves, and the stock of machines increases. So this increases potential output. Now we have to look at the words actual output. Actual output is what the economy is actually producing. So it's the actual GDP, not the potential, but the actual. Now, strangely enough, actual output can actually be greater than potential output. And that's just because of the way we define potential. We define potential as the output that we are making when everyone, all the resources are being used normally at their normal rate. But of course, workers can volunteer to work more than eight hours a day if they want to. They probably won't be able to do this for very long because they'll get tired, but uh, a workforce of a country can work harder than normal, at least for a short period of time. So the actual output of an economy can be greater than its potential. But when the actual output is greater than its potential, the greatest danger is inflation. Because when an economy is producing at a level which is above its potential, income is higher than we would expect, and therefore spending will be higher than we would expect. Also, if workers are working more than eight hours a day, they will probably ask for higher wages, and this will cause cost-push inflation. So we have both demand-pull and cost-push inflation creeping in when the actual output of the economy is greater than its potential. So now we are ready to talk about the economic cycle. We have learned so far that there is something called potential output and something called actual output, and that actual can be greater than potential, and that when actual is greater than potential, inflation is the biggest danger. So now let's use those facts and some others to discuss and find out why the economy moves in a cycle. Here we see a graph 
with time on the x-axis and output on the y-axis. The black line represents potential output, and we can see that the potential is rising over time. The purple line represents actual output, and it shows that the economy typically moves in a cycle. It grows, sometimes above its potential, and then falls again to below its potential. And this cycle repeats over time. So this is what we call the economic cycle, and we have to explain why it happens. To explain why it happens, let's start at a point where the actual output is below potential. In this situation, both the central bank and the government would want the economy to grow. They would want the output to increase. So here we have a point such as point A, where the actual output is well below the potential at that time, at that point in time. So we start at a point where the economy is operating well below its potential. The central bank will now engage in expansionary monetary policy. They want the economy to grow. So they will use monetary policy to ha make that happen. So what they will do is reduce the bank rate, that is the interest rate which they charge to commercial banks when they want to borrow money from the central bank. When the bank rate is reduced, households and firms will find it cheaper to borrow money if the commercial banks reduce their lending rates in line with what the central bank has done with the bank rate. So this relies on the, on the commercial banks following the lead of the central bank so that when the central bank reduces its bank rate, the commercial banks would also reduce their lending rates. If they do that, households and firms will find borrowing is cheaper, and therefore they will borrow more. Therefore, consumer spending and investment spending will both increase. As consumer spending and investment spending increase, both will have a multiplier effect on output, and the output will rise quite fast as a result of the multiplier effect. In addition, as consumer spending increases, investment spending will increase quite fast according to the accelerator theory, which says that investment spending depends on the rate of change of consumer spending. So what we have now is that we have the accelerator effect and the multiplier effect reinforcing each other. They're both pushing the economy up. They're both pushing output up quite quickly. Now, because both these things happen and push output up very fast in the same direction, we can have a situation where even though we started at an output level which was below potential, we soon find that the output of the economy has risen to above its potential. If this happens, the central bank will now change its opinion about the future. It is no longer worried about economic growth. What it's worried about now is inflation. And in order to ward off inflation, the central bank will now do the reverse of what it did before. Instead of reducing the bank rate, it will increase the bank rate. As soon as it does this, everything will go into reverse. Borrowing is now more expensive, so consumers will borrow less. But as soon as consumer spending, the change in consumer spending becomes negative, investment spending, according to the accelerator theory, will drop to zero. So now, both consumer spending and investment spending are both falling at the same time. And we will have a negative multiplier effect. So instead of rising fast, the income or output of the country will start falling very fast. Very soon, the output of the country may be below its potential. So we have gone full circle. We started at a point below potential. We rose very quickly above potential. And now we are below potential again. In other words, we have completed one full economic cycle. What this shows is that the whole cycle will now start again, but it also illustrates that because of the multiplier effect and the accelerator effect working together, 
it is very difficult to keep the GDP of a country growing steadily. The GDP tends to go up and down in a cycle. And despite all the efforts of the central bank to either move the bank rate down or to move it up, the timing is never quite exactly accurate. The central bank cannot time the changes of the interest rate precisely to make the economy grow steadily. The multiplier effect plus the accelerator effect is very explosive. The two always work in the same direction. When they are both working positively, the economy rises fast. Its GDP rises fast. When they are both working negatively, the GDP rises or falls fast. And therefore, despite what the central bank does with the interest rate, it is almost impossible to keep the GDP rising steadily. It will always rise and fall in a cycle. So what we've seen is that the multiplier effect and the accelerator effect, they work together. So we have a combination of multiplier and accelerator. And together, they explain why the economy goes in a cycle, why GDP goes in a cycle and doesn't go straight up or straight down.